Happy Lord's Day po sa bawat isa. Salamat po sa ating Panginoon sa panibagong araw na ito na ating uh, sama-samang pananambahan. At sa buwan po ito ay pasisimulan po natin ang panibago pong tema ng ating pong pag-aaral at yan po ay ang The Characteristics of the Follower of Jesus. At uh, ano nga ba, uh, what, what exactly ang uh, para matawag ka na follower o tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Lahat po sa atin ay meron pong personalidad at uh, may mga unique na characteristics. Pero bilang isang tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, ano ba ang hinahanap o inaasahan po sa, sa atin? At ito po'y napakahalaga, hindi lamang po kung ano po ang ating ginagawa, kundi kung sino po tayo. Ang layunin po ng serye ng ating pong pag-aaral sa buong buwan ho ng Hunyo ay upang siya sa atin po ang ating mga puso at uh, ating pong suriin kung tayo po ay talagang tagasunod ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo ay napakahalaga na ma- maunawaan natin, maintindihan natin ang uh, karanasan na maring kinakaharap po natin at kung sino talaga tayo sa ating pong uh, pang-araw-araw na paglakad sa buhay pananampalataya bilang masasabi po nating tunay na tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Bago po tayo magpatuloy sa ating pong pag-aaral, muli samahan niyo po ako sa panalangin and let's ask God for His help and for His blessing. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge this is to be Your Word and we ask now that By your Holy Spirit, buksan niyo ang aming mga mata upang maunawaan po namin ang mga katotohanan nito. Dalangin namin, Panginoon, that by the Spirit, you would search our own hearts out, that we might see the truth of your commands and see where we fall short and seek to find refuge in Christ alone. That we might in turn, Panginoon, delight in your law. No longer fearing it as an enemy, but rejoicing in it bilang kapahayagan, Panginoon, ng iyong sariling katangian, your own character. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Ang mga tao daw po ay uh, gustong-gusto nila ang mga tinatawag kong mega or greatest question. Kaya ho, kung pag-uusapan ay ano ba ang, ang greatest empire sa kasaysayan, maring sasabihin ng iba ay Persian or Greek or Roman o kaya British Empire. O kaya sino ba ang greatest leader sa kasaysayan ng mundo? Marahil sasabihin na ba ay si Alexander the Great or si Augustus Caesar o kaya si Nelson Mandela o si Winston Churchill. Kung tayo po ay babaling naman sa palakasan o sa sports, sino ba ang greatest tennis player? Marahil sasabihin nila ay si John McEnroe, si Pete Sampras, o kaya si Roger Federer, o kaya si Rafael Nadal. Sino naman ang greatest uh, football or soccer player? Maring si Pele, si Maradona, o kaya si Messi, at sasabihin ba hindi, si Ronaldo. Uh, or kung tatanungin natin, sino ba ang uh, greatest NBA basketball player? Bay, marami yung magsasabi niyan. Walang kaduda-duda. Eh, si Michael Jordan na yan. O kaya si Magic Johnson. O kaya si Larry Bird. O sa mga kapanuhunan namin ngayon. Uh, Stephen Curry. At si, <laughs> si Lebron James. Yan. Yan, mga kilala lang ko lang. Natatandaan ko. <laughs> Pero pagdating naman, ho, sino ang greatest PBA player? Ba, marami ho dyan. Sasabi, ah, si Fernandez. Ah, hindi mawawala sa listahan dyan si Jaworski. Of course, yung saring atin, Freddy Hubalde, Abet Gidabin. Yan ang sariling atin ho yan, di ba? Patrimonyo at kung sino-sino pa. Ho. At pagdating naman sa mga sa boxing, no? sino ang greatest uh, boxer? Maring sabi natin, Muhammad Ali, Rocky Marciano, siyempre, wag na tayong lumayo, Manny Pacquiao. Pagdating naman sa mga pelikula, may sinasabi rin pinakamagandang pelikula, Space Odyssey, 
o kaya Gun with the Wind, Casablanca, pero mga naabutan ko na lang yung mga Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Ang pagka-intereso sa mga mega o greatest question ay hindi na po bago. They go back even to the time of Jesus na kung saan merong isang eskriba o guro ng kautosan, a religious leader, a biblical and legal scholar, at posible ay membro ng Sanedrin, ay lumapit sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at siya po ay tinanong ng the greatest, the most important of all the commandments. At sa ating pong passage, it is a really significant question and it is asked and answered. Of all the commandments of the law of God, Which one is the greatest? At sa inkwentro pong ito, sa tagpo na ito, ang Panginoong Heso Kristo ay sinagot niya. Jesus is asked this very important question. And it is a question about presidency or about preeminence, about priority. Sino ang dapat mauna? Sino ang higit sa lahat? At ang katotohanan pong ito sa mga talata na ating binasa ho kanina ay nagtuturo po sa atin how we are to respond to God above and to our fellow humans all around us sa mga taong nakapaligid sa atin. What Jesus had to say to this man, to this scribe, has much to say to us today. Meron din pong naisabihin ang Panginoon sa atin. Gaya po ng sinabi ho sa Matthew chapter 22, verse 40, na kung saan doon po itinala. Ang sabi ko doon, on these two commandments depend or hang all the law and the prophets. And so, both commandments are grounded in our responsibility to love. Ang umibig. At tinuturo po na ating Panginoon Su Kristo, yung command na ito, to love God, is the first and most important ang pangunahin at pinakamahalaga. Loving God is the highest importance for our Christian life. We are about to discover that our response to these two commandments, sabalit ngayon pong araw na ito, mas didiinan po natin yung una, sapagkat yung pong ating talagang paksa ngayon pong araw pong ito. So these two commandments above all others expose our heart. Maaring ilantad ang ating pong puso. Maaring ilantad at ibunyag ang ating kaluluwa, nilalaman ang ating kalooban, and reveal to us what matters most to us. Ihayag ano ang pinakamahalaga sa atin. Kaya ang tanong po sa atin ngayon pong umagang ito, kaibigan, what do you cherish? Ano ang iyong talagang iniibig? What do you delight in? Anong iyong kinalulugdan? What is of supreme value in your life? Ano ang higit mong uh, pinapahalagahan? What is the most important to you in life? And what do you desire most? We are all about to find out this morning. And let the Lord speak to your heart and mind today. And let Him show you something about the preeminence the presidency and the priorities in your own life and mind. In verse 22, the question argued, pinagtatalunan ang katanungan na ito. As Jesus spoke with the Sadducees sa mga una hong talata at maging sa Matthew chapter 22, meron pong isang lalaki, isa pong eskriba na nakikinig kasi sa mga unang uh, talata, hop, nagtatalunan, kinakausap ang ating Panginoon Kristo ng mga Pareseyo, ng mga Saduseyo, ng uh, mga Herodians. At nakikinig ang lalaking ito. And we are told that he was a scribe, a theological scholar. Pa- probably isa siyang uh, bahagi ng tinatawag na Parasiic uh, fac- Faction. Uh, siya ay guro ng kautusan, an expert of the Jewish religious law. Sa madaling salita, siya po ay isang manananggol, isa pong lawyer. And this is another expression for scribes for Pharisees. So, ibig sabihin, siya po ay nag-specialize in interpreting the law. 
he, he, he deals in all the legal intricacies of the code of the Old Testament. So, ganun po kadalubhasa ang lalaki pong ito. And he had overheard our Lord's dispute with the Sanhedrin at uh, mga Pariseo, mga Herodians, mga Saduceo. And he also saw paano sumagot ang ating Panginoon Kristo sa mga dispute na yun, sa mga argumento na yun na pinag-uusapan. And he comes to Jesus and he asked a question that was often uh, bantered. Laging pinag-uusapan about uh, itong, itong uh, paksa na ito sa religious circles. Which commandment is the most important of all? Which one would you say is the greatest? So, hindi po ito ganong kadali na katanungan lang pagka ating pinakinggan. In fact, the question simply continued in a long-running debate among the religiously minded. Talagang pinagtatalunan na ho itong question na ito. And he asked which commandments of God is of fundamental importance and central to everything else. Why is he asking this question to Jesus? Bakit tinanong, tinatanong niya o tinanong niya ang katanungan ito sa ating Panginoon sa Kristo? Back in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, Matthew makes it very clear to us that the purpose of the Pharisees in sending this lawyer to ask question of Jesus was to test Jesus, to trap him, to trip Jesus up. Na ang Panginoon ay kanilang sukulin, siluin sa pamamagitan ng pagtatanong na ito. And we, we, we know that the Pharisees, the, the religious Jews of their days, sa tinatawag nilang rabbinic tradition, they divided the commandments of God in the Old Testament into 613 separate instruction. And that there were on, only some lively de debates about which of those commandments. Sa lahat ng six, sa, sa 613 na commandments na ito, Ano ang pinakahigit dyan? Kaya hindi ho ganong kadali ang tanong na ito na pilit hong tinitest sa ating Panginoon. Because 248 of these were viewed as being positive. Hinati ho nila yan. And uh, uh, 365 naman po ay viewed as a negative, as negative. So ito ho mga commands na ito were then subdivided into two groups. The heavy and the light, yung mabibigat at magagaang. Ngayon, ang problema po dito, the scribe, yung mga eskriba, hindi sila mag-agree. They could not agree on which commands were, kung ano dyan ang mabigat, ano dyan ang, ang magaang, which were light or less binding or more binding. So, the scribes love to debate the law. Talagang pinagdidebatihan nila ito, malaki ang mga argumento nila sa, sa paksa na ito. They were constantly trying to figure out on which command was the most important. And this refers to rank and priority. And so, kung ang ating Panginoon sa Kristo ay sasabihin niyang isang bagay, tutulig sa inyan at sasabihin, ah, hindi yan, mali ka. At sasabihin, kung sasabihin naman ng Panginoon, ah, ito ang pinaka-importante. Babanggain din naman yan. Ah, hindi yan. So, ganun yung, ganun yung scenario. Ganun yung, yung tagpo. And they wanted to see what Jesus thought about it. So, there's one thing na gusto ko pong makita kung titignahin nyo ang talatang 28. Because in this verse, we see the testing question na kung saan ang eskriba po na ito, ito pong lawyer na ito, this expert in the Jewish religious law, as of Jesus. It is a question of great importance. It is a question much more significant sa walang katuturang tinatanong ng mga pariseyo. This was a serious question. It was an important question. It was a question about what our greatest duty is in life. 
And surely, that's a pretty significant question, hindi ba? What is the supreme obligation in our life? Ano ang pinakahigit na tungkulin ho natin sa buhay? And that's a question worth meditating on. Na dapat ho natin pagbulay-bulayan. And whatever the motivation for asking that question, whether the sinful attitude of the scribes for Phari- of the Pharisees was, when they ask this question, this question prompts us to ask, do we reverently reflect on what our supreme duty is to God? Napagbulay-bulayan na ho ba natin? Ano nga ba ang ating pinakahigit na tungkulin sa Diyos. We need to stand back and recognize that the issue of what is our greatest duty, what is our supreme obligation to God. And that's a good question. That's worth a few quiet times. That's worth some biblical reflection. Ang katanungan pong ito, what is the greatest commandment presses the issue sa lahat po sa atin. What is our greatest duty? What is our supreme obligation to God? And it ought to have all our ears willing to hear kung ano ang sasabihin ng ating Panginoon. Because what He thinks about that matters a lot. And so this scribe asked Jesus to declare Himself. And our Lord gladly obliges. And His answer takes us to the core of what really matters in life. What is of supreme importance? Ano ang pinakamahalaga? And so the question addressed. This scribe, this scribe recognized, has recognized Jesus as a great teacher. Kinikilala niya naman na isang dakilang guru ang ating Panginoong Yesus. The words that Jesus had used with the Pharisees and, and the Herodians and the Sadducees has impressed him. Yung paano niya sinagot ang mga pareseyo, na-impress siya doon. The, the, the wisdom, the, the keenness, the prompt, promptness, the alacrity kung paano sumagot ang ating Panginoon sa Kristo sa mga katanungan ng mga pareseyo, sa mga naunang mga pagtatanong sa Kanya ng mga Herodians, ng mga Saduceyo, na impress po siya. The way na ma- merong competence ang ating Panginoon sa mga sinasabing know-it-alls na mga clever question ng mga pareseyo, particularly ang mga Saduceyo. And so this man had impressed him greatly. And so he asked a question of his own. And here's the great question that consumes this man. Of all the commandments, sa lahat ng kautusan, which is the most important. And so Jesus addresses this man's question by first quoting the Shema of Israel from Deuteronomy chapter 6 that every Jew knows. Alam na alam ito ng mga Hudyo. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That great, profound statement of monotheism that was at the heart of Judaism. Yan ang pinakapuso ng, mga, ng Hudahismo. Merong iisa lamang Diyos, the unity of God and the oneness of God. And Jesus quotes the second half of that. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your might and strength. Or strength. And that thing which is so important to the Jews, that is, nire-recite to nila ito dalawang beses sa araw at sa gabi. Ganun po ang kanilang pagtangan sa tinatawag nilang Shama. Siya masama ho nilang nire-recite ito araw at gabi. At itong para makatiyak ko sila, the Shema was written on a small strip of paper na kung saan doon po ay nakasulat at minsan yan po ay nakalagay sa kanilang forehand o kaya sa kanilang forehead na tinatawag kong phylacteries. 
para i-remind sila na dapat ito ay, ay i-recite nila. At nilalagay din ho nila ito sa tinatawag nilang mezuzah. Ito ho ay nilalagay nila doon sa kanilang doorpost at nababasa ho nila yan upang tiyakin ho nila. It was an effort to literally fulfill the command of Deuteronomy chapter 6, 8 and 9. So ganun po talaga nila ito inoobserve. And so Jesus goes to this command and He goes to a law which commands love. Nang inuutos po ay pag-ibig, umibig. And this man is so impressed by that that Jesus can weave two texts together and say, this is the greatest commandment. Loving God and loving our neighbor. Summarizing perhaps the first four tables of the law, the first four commandments of the Ten Commandments, and summarizing the last six commandments of the law. So, ito hong dalawang commands na ito are the sum of the total of the whole law of God. Both are duty, Godward and manward. And these commands sum the whole thing up. But this is a question of priority of love. Let's take particularly see ito hong verse 30 and our Lord's powerful answer phrase by phrase. Note the first sentence, the Lord our God, the Lord Yahweh, our God Elohim. The Lord Yahweh is one. Ito po yung puso at kaluluwa ng pananampalataya ng mga Hudyo. At ganun din po ng Kristyanismo. Yahweh is His covenant name na binigay niya ho sa kanyang bansang Israel. Yahweh is our God and only our God. We have no other. Yahweh is one. The Lord our God is one. He is one in essence, one in existence. He alone is God and there is no other. Wala nang iba pa. And this is a powerful statement of uniqueness and exclusivity. Our God is God alone and our God alone will accept, only accept, our exclusive worship, exclusive love, devotion, and allegiance. Cheer teachers of the law and theologians could debate all they want, but Jesus begins by bringing them back to the basics, to the fundamental, the non-negotiables of the faith. And we should love God for who He is and with all we are kung sino siya at ng lahat-lahat sa atin. Because of who God is, we are to love God supremely. Again, in verse 30, Jesus went on to say, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your might or your strength. The repetition of the word all four times is very significant as it emphasizes the comprehensive nature of how we are to love Yahweh, our Elohim, the Lord, our God. The phrase the Lord is the word kurios. And it speaks of one with owns another, a master. Ikaw ay pag-aari ng, ng uh, isa o ng isang Panginoon. We cannot truly love the Lord until we see Him as Lord. Siya ba ang Panginoon talaga ng buhay mo? We, we do not truly really love Him until we have surrendered all to Him and acknowledge that He is our Master and we are His servants. This is a call of a life of absolute submission and surrender. Your God this phrase speaks of being a saving in, in a saving relationship with God Almighty. He is not your God until you have surrendered to Him and believe the gospel for your salvation. What is called for is a total response of love and devotion to our great God. Ito hong fourfold use of heart, soul, mind, and strength is not intended 
bilang psychological analysis ng human personality. Hindi ho, ito po ay tawag to love God wholly and completely. And that means everything about you is to be committed to God. And so the question is, how do you love God supremely? And sabi ho ng Panginoon, with all your heart. Now the word heart refers to the core of our physical beings. Ito po ay nagpapahayag ng ating emosyon, the real you on the inside. Your heart refers to your will, to your uh, the decision maker. It, it, it's the core of who you are, kung sino ka. It is where you are, it is where your values, your priorities, your standard ay nananahan. Your best life is where, is where your heart is obsessed and completely committed to God. You, you make every decision based sa kanya hong kaluwalhatian, not your convenience or comfort. The very core of your being should throb with the love for the Lord. Dapat yan ang tinitibok ng puso mo. Pag-ibig sa ating Diyos. To love God with all our hearts, we need to have a devotion to Him that is unlike anything else in our life. Wala siyang kapares pag napinag-usapan ng devotion. Ang devotion. Wala siyang hambing. Wala siyang kapantay. And one evidence of real love to God is, is communion to Him. The love of communion. Gusto mo makipagniig sa ating Panginoon. You love His ordinances. You love the Word. You love the prayer. You find contentment in God. You love the God of our blessings more than the blessings of God. And if you had to choose between the two, you'd take God, the God of the blessings and you'd leave behind the blessing themselves because you find your contentment in God. In the 14th chapter of Gospel of John, ang sabi ng ating Panginoong Jesus, if we love Him, we will keep His commandments. If we are the people that want to love Jesus with all our hearts, then we are people that need to love Jesus fully and always pursue holiness in all levels of our lives. Tinalaki ho natin yan last year ang kabanalan. There cannot be any area sa atin pong buhay that we do not want to surrender to the reign of King Jesus. Wala tayong dapat na anuman sa buhay natin na hindi natin kayang isuko, ipasakop sa ating Panginoon. Pag kinag-usapan ho, ang purs- pursuing hell and holiness, naroon ang hatred for sin. You cannot love God and love sin at the same time. That's impossible. It talks about sympathy with God. Ibig sabihin, the same things that grieve Him, grieve you. Kung saan nagdadalamhati ang Diyos, nagdadalamhati ka rin. Yung desire ng Diyos, desire mo rin. How can you truly love God and not want everybody else in the world or in this community to experience His love as well? Ikaw lang ang nakaranas yan. Ayaw mo iparanas sa iba. And also, cheerfully loving, doing His will. Alam mo yung, yung sakit pagka, yung, yung aching in His presence na sinasabi, na kahit na hindi mo naiintindihan, may conflict sa iyong idea, sa iyong agenda, yung pinagagawaan sa iyo ng Panginoon, yung kalooban sa iyo ng Diyos, but then, katuloy pa rin ang pagsunod mo sa Panginoon. All those are evidences of real love for God. With all your soul, the, world, the word soul refers to the seat of the emotions and the will. Soul speaks up to, to, to the spirit. Yung espirito. Yung small spirit, not the Holy Spirit. The self, meaning the self-conscious life. And this includes your attitudes and your convictions. This will should also in, be, in, in, be involved. Yung ating kalooban, yung will. And that is, loving the Lord is a decision we make within the will. Well, how, how do we love the Lord with all our soul? Well, certainly one way to do that is through our worship. Sa ating pagsamba. Tayo po ay naririto ngayon pong umaga. Certainly, 
upang ipakita on some level na gusto, hangarin ho nating sambahin ang ating Panginoong ang ating pong Panginoong Diyos. Tama? We should be people that want to worship God with all our souls. The best we can do this is by seeing God for who He really is. Napansin niyo ho ba na sa Biblia, when someone has an encounter with God, they just about all the same reaction. Meron lamang mo silang pare-parehong reaction. When they realize that they are in the presence of the Holy God, they are full of fear and awe. Takot at pagkamangha, paggalang. And they have a desire to fall down ang magpatira pa at sambahin ang ating Panginoong Diyos. Ganon ang kanilang reaction. Is that the way you think about God? Or has worship become boring or stale for you? Maanta na ba ang pagtingin mo sa pananambahan? Nabobore ka ba sa pagsamba? Boring. Do you look to blame your coldness to worship on things like song choices or preacher style or the instrumentation that, that is being used during the worship? Doon mo ba sinisisim pagiging malamig mo sa pagsamba? You see, when you do that, then we are putting the focus on our own desires and taking the focus off of God Himself. Hindi na sa Diyos ang focus mo, kundi sa sarili mo. Do, do you really prepare for worship in the expectation of coming here, meeting face to face with the Holy God? The, the creator of the universe, the great I am. Or, nagmamadali ka dahil ang feeling mo, huli ka na, late ka na, meron ka malang masabing naabutan bago ulit maghiwa-hiwalay. You know, when we come to worship, we are the ones coming to do the worship. We are the ones that are to be active. We are the ones offering up our souls in the worship of our great God. And to be sure, the Lord responds and He often meets His people when they are worshiping, renewing them with His Holy Spirit. At dito ho ang ating Panginoon. He encourages us to worship God with all our souls. Do you give your all? Binibigay mo bang lahat sa pagsamba sa Diyos? Is worship truly a priority for you? Kapag pinapili ka, saan ka pupunta ngayong araw na ito? Saan ka pupunta? Please don't presume upon God that He should do a great work in your life as you passively engage in His worship. Huwag ka nang umasa pagka ganun. The Lord is great and He is worthy to be praised and so worship Him well. Because He is a deserving God. With all your mind. Ang salita pong mind refers to the intellect. Mind speaks to our intelligence and thought life. And sabi ho, loving God with all your mind is about your way of thinking, your mindset. This is where you take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. This is where you set your mind on things above, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. This is where you allow God to, to change the way you think so you can know His will for your life, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. This is where you fix your eyes, your, your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and and, and lovely and admirable, Philippians chapter 4. To love God with, with our minds is to hold Him in His 
in, in, in his high esteem, in high esteem, to, to think about him with reverence and with adoration. With all your strength, the word strength speaks of our might, our, our bodily power, and our abilities. Every ability, bawat kaloo, bawat talento, bawat kalakasan is to be mobilized to love the Lord. Whatever healthy and physical strength na meron ka, use it for the glory of God. Whatever financial strength you have, use it to support the kingdom of God. Whatever relational and social strength you have, use it to influence others for Christ. Use your influence, whether that is a church, work, school, family, or community, to express your love to God. Now, the idea here is presented that is that we are to love God with the entirety of our beings. Yung kabuan. The use of four nouns, heart, mind, soul, strength, is merely a way of emphasizing, binibigay niya ho ng diin, yung the whole person, yung kabuan mo, bilang ikaw, must love God. And Jesus says that our prime duty in life, He looks this man in the eye at sinabi niya, your prime duty in life is to love God with all your being. Isang umano nila, isang teologo, si Sinclair Ferguson, ang sabi niya, God is never satisfied with anything less than the devotion of our whole life for the whole duration of our lives. And so the intellectual, emotional, volitional, physical elements of personhood all combine to love one true God. It is an intelligent love. It is an emotional love. It is a willing love. It is an active love. It, it is an all-consuming love. God loves us with all He has. We are to love Him the same way. Kung inibig niya tayo ng lubos-lubos at lahat-lahat, dapat ganun din ang ating pag-ibig sa Kanya. God's standards of love is all-consuming. Napakadaliho para sa atin to caught up thinking about loving God with our heart, mind, soul, strength. But the point Jesus is making here is to love God with everything above all else. With all we are, with all we have, with all our abilities, with everything. This takes wholehearted passion. You know, the greatest commandment God imposes on us is to love Him with everything we have and everything we are. And sabi ng Panginoon, we are to love God with all the totality of our being. It means that we must give all ourselves over to God. Lahat. Wala kang ititira. He, he doesn't want just a part of us. Huwag mong ibigay ang tingi-tingi ang tira-tira sa Diyos. Mahiya tayo. He requires the whole thing. Heart, mind, soul, strength. Full tilt all the time without fail. God must come first in everything we feel, think, and do. It must all be done for His glory alone out of a pure love for Him. The idea of giving to God in an, in, 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 in an animated way. Ibigay mo na meron namang kasiglahan. Hindi empty, hindi lifeless. But a flame in burning, nagliliyab, nagaalab para sa Diyos. Ang pag-ibig mo. With, with, with all your strength, with energy and commitment and zeal and enthusiasm, you delight to do His will. It is the idea of total commitment and total surrender. This is genuine love for the Lord that God-centered, wholehearted devotion is what it's all about. Ang tanong ho, meron ba tayong ganyang uri ng pag-ibig sa Diyos? 
Jesus here calls us all to wholehearted love. He calls us to love God for Himself. Not for what He can give us, but for Himself. Hindi kung ano may bibigay niya sa'yo, kundi siya mismo. Love God for who He is. He calls us to love Him as much as we are able. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, He calls us to love God actively. To actively display that love of God. Ipakita mo, ihayag mo. Not just to say that we love God. Ang daling sabihin yan, kapatid. I love you, Lord. Ang daling sabihin, hindi ba? Ang daling bigkasin, ang daling iusal. But to practically live out our love to God, that is the challenge for us. We need to learn how to put our love for God into practice. We do that by obeying His commands. I love you, kanang. I love you sa Lord. Hindi mo naman sinusunod yung sinasabi niya sa'yo. Anong katuturan ang pagsasabi mong, I love you, Lord? Hindi mo naman siya sinusunod. Ano ang kalooban niya sa'yo? The person who truly loves the Lord is the person who fully trusts God and obeys the Lord in every area of his or her life. To obey God is to honor Him. You know, obedience delight God and, and, and shows that we have confidence in Him. It is a tangible expression and truly, it is the only thing we have to offer God in return for the great love and grace that He has given to us. Obedience is not difficult for the one who loves God. Sa isang tunay na nagmamahal sa Diyos, hindi mahirap yan. In fact, it gives clear evidence that we belong to Him. 1 John chapter 2. If we want to love God, we must love Him exclusively. Ang sabi ho, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. It is not first about loving God in every area of your life. In fact, it is a warning against half-heartedness. It is a caution about divided loyalties. Now, if we want to mostly, mostly love God with our hearts, well then, we fall short of what Jesus is teaching us here this morning. Mostly lang. Almost. Because for the call is to love God with all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. If that's the great and first commandment, Diba, tinanong, anong greatest commandment? You know the next question? What is the worst sin imaginable? What is the greatest sin? Ang sagot, to love anything or anyone more than you love God. Let me clarify that. To love your wife, your husband, your kids, your apos, your grandchildren, more than you love Him. To be more passionate about your job than you are about Him. It is the greatest sin imaginable. Not because I say so, but because Jesus said, you're asking me what is the greatest? He's the greatest commandment. And to violate that greatest commandment is to commit the greatest sin because you violated the greatest commandment. And that is the logic there. No other gods can have our attention. Anyone we love more than God is an idol. Bagamat marami yung sa atin, contending with the, hindi naman masasabi kagaya ng mga Israel na may, may, may literal talaga na idols or false deities. But every single one of us, every single day, Nakikipaglaban ho tayo, nakikipagtuos po tayo araw-araw with a divided heart. Do you love God? You may answer to me, yes. But your life might also be marked by a kind of devotion, an ultimate love that's directed of something else or many things. Pwede nating sabihin, oo, pero sa totoo lang, nakabaling ka sa iba. No, I, I'm not talking about someone who simply says something like, I love basketball. 
You can live by this most important command to love God and still love basketball. But if, for example, basketball keeps you from gathering and growing with God's people on Sunday morning, your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength may be divided. The Bible, the, the Bible calls us wholehearted, life-encompassing, community-impacting, exclusive commitment to our God. It is wonderfully a call to cultivate an all-in devotion to God. What Jesus is, this, ang, ang, ang pinapakita po dito na ating Panos Kristo is an absolute priority of God-directed, fully invested love. Our hearts must be set only on what delights His heart. Kung ano ang mga nakalulugod lamang sa puso ng ating Panginoon. Our minds must be anchored only to His word as the final authority. Our souls must be, the, be satisfied only with what pleases Him. Our strength must be spent on what serves Him alone. We, we love God with all our heart when we love Him exclusively, Him and Him alone. We love God we, we, with all our soul when we find satisfaction in Him more than any other other person or anything. We love God with all our mind when we make the decision to obey ang bawat salita niya, ang bawat command niya sa atin. We love God with all our strength when we persevere in the face of trials, of every trial. Isa pong teologo, si Sam Storms, ay nagbigay po ng kanyang serye ng mga katanungan upang suriin siya sa atin ang ating love life. Para daw masiyasat po natin ang ating love life when it comes to rightly loving God. Ito ang kanya mga katanungan. Is the Lord the all-consuming passion of my life? Tanungin ho natin yan sa ating mga sarili. Do I have a deep, intense, and abiding affection for my Lord? Am I loyal to my God with an exclusive love? Do I resist and even oppose anything or anyone that seeks to do my Lord harm? Am I zealous to, with grace, defend my Lord's name and honor? Do I enjoy spending time with my Lord? Do I do things that please my Lord and increase His joy? Do I brag on my Lord to others? Do I tell my Lord that I love Him? Do I talk with my Lord as much as I can? Tandaan po natin, these are not things na kailangan kong gawin para mahalin ako ng Diyos. They are things I do because I am loved by Him and because I love Him. I never lose sight of the fact that I do not love Him to, 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 to get Him to love me. I love Him because He first loved me. And now the question adopted in verses 34 to 30, 32 to 34. Nung ang eskriba pong ito ay narinig niya ang tugon at kasagutan ng ating Panginoon, he response, his response is to say, well, and this word means beautiful. You know, ibig sabihin yan, beautiful. He is saying, yes, that is a beautiful answer, good answer. And there is one God and to love Him. There is only one God and to love Him perfectly and to love others perfectly is far more than important than all religious rituals sa buong mundo. Describe, demonstrate his ability to correctly handle God's word when he makes this point that love, that, that love of God and of neighbors is superior to offering a sacrifice. Higit kaysa sa paghahandog. And this scribe had come to understand that the law of God was more than a religious system to follow. What Jesus told the man was that if you love the one true God, you would also love your neighbor. Ito hong dual manifestation ng pag-ibig na ito was most important thing because it was the only proper response to the Lord's revelation of Himself to His chosen people. From Jesus' words, connecting love of God with love of neighbor, the scribe correctly figured out or deduced 
that the love of God and of neighbor was the basis for sacrifice, not the other way around. We, we do not offer sacrifice so as to keep God's love or earn God's love. No, we sacrifice because we has been, God has been gracious to us, not as to get Him to be gracious to us by earning His favor. The question is, why did this man see it when all the others had missed it? And Mark tells us in verse 34, when Jesus saw that the scribe had answered wisely, he said to him, listen, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Jesus' comment is intentionally ambiguous. Parang hindi ganong kaklaro. Obviously, Jesus wants the man to think about more about this matter. Narinig ng lalaking ito kung ano yung sinabi ng ating Panginoon. He was intrigued by his answer and, and was then able to take Jesus' words and follow them through to the point where he was able to see things correctly. And ayon sa ating Panginoong Jesus, he was very close to the kingdom. Malapit ka na sa kaharian. Parang ganon. In other words, he was coming to faith. Malapit na doon sa pananampalataya. He was beginning to understand that Jesus was the Messiah because in Jesus, the kingdom of God draws near. But let me, let me um, tell you something about this. This man would remain near but outside the kingdom of God. This man would remain near, malapit lang, but outside pa rin, labas pa rin sa karihan ng Diyos. Unless he ceases questioning and starts believing Christ. Marami ka bang katanungan sa buhay o patungkol sa ating Panginoon? Baka kailangan mo na itigil at maniwala ka na, manampalataya ka na. Jesus is saying, you are close, but you are not quiet there. Pero wala ka pa dun. He, he is still outside the kingdom of God. Yes, he may be near, but he's not a member of the kingdom. He has not yielded to the king's rule. This man was close, very close, but he still had ways to go. He was standing at the door of salvation and was looking in on things, on, on the things of God, but he had not yet to take the step of faith that would guarantee his salvation. And that will be the same for you and me today. Kaibigan, it is possible for a person to have a religious upbringing and still be lost. Kahit ka na dito lumaki sa KB. It is possible to have heard the gospel preached all your life and still be resting on your own goodness and good works. It is possible to be gospel hardened and, and, and to seal your own damnation while sitting on a church chair. It is possible to be within an inch of heaven and still die and go to hell. Kapatid, you may be so near, but you are so far at the end. And you may be that close to the kingdom of God. You may move in the circles of those who are in the kingdom. Maring nakikihalubilo ka dito kasama ng mga Mananampalataya. And you can almost smell and taste the kingdom of God. But you're not in the kingdom of God because you haven't yielded to the kingship and rule and sway of Jesus in your own life, in your soul, in your family, in your affections, in your motives, in your desires. You may be close, but you are lost. You know, Maging malapit ka is not good enough. 
you must enter by faith in Christ in His death and resurrection. You may have looked into the door of salvation for years. Maring naririnig mo na ilang beses ang mga pangaral patungkol dyan. But you have never stepped inside. You may be our only inches from heaven, but you still headed to hell. Kapatid, don't let that happen to you. Don't let that happen to you. Wag mong haya ang mangyari yan sa iyo. You need a new heart. You need the grace and mercy of God who can make you a new creation in Christ. You need to draw near to Christ. One draws near and enters the kingdom not by religion. One draws near and enters this kingdom by a relationship with Jesus. A relationship that results in loving God supremely, actively, and exclusively. How is your relationship with God today? If it is all it should be, you love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you love others as well as you, as you love yourself. If that is true about you, or do you need to make improvements in that area? sa buhay mo. Meron pong isang matanda na bumisita sa isang art gallery sa London. And he look around and nakita niya ang magagandang mga paintings. At particularly, a painting of Jesus hanging on the cross. At siya po ay napatigil at kanyang tinitigan, pinagmasdan and with such great love for the one hanging on the cross, love flooded his heart. And all he could say was, I love him. I love him. Narinig iyan ng mga taong nakapaligid sa kanya. Nakita siya ang kanyang luha tumutulo sa kanyang mga mata as he stood before the picture hat in hand, captivated by the love of God. And soon, a stranger drew near him and grasped his son, kinuha ang kanyang kamay, at sinabi sa kanya, I love him too, brother. Mahal ko rin siya. And a third man stepped forward, saying, so do I. Ako din. Then a fourth and a fifth stood before the picture, and then a whole group of people Perfect strangers were drawn by the love of Jesus. This old man knew his greatest calling in life and he had learned the most important lesson. He loved God with all his heart, mind, strength, and soul. And there is no greater joy than loving God and then helping others to love Him too. Nothing, nothing will satisfy, satisfy us long term except God Himself. And all the other blessings will flow from loving Him. Jesus is saying that kung ating ibubuod ang lahat ng mga kautusan sa Biblia and all the things it refers to when it comes to your relationship with God, it, it can all be condensed down into loving God with everything we have and everything we are. How are you loving God today? Father God, we thank you for the time in your word. Ngayon pong umaga. Always so profoundly rich. Napakayaman, Panginoon, ng iyong salita. Seal it to our hearts and use it, Lord, to bring honor to your name. Oh Lord, the challenge is hard at times. Minsan, Lord, ang hirap talaga nasasabihin namin loving you with everything we have gayong ang aming puso ay umiyak our hearts cry out to love ourselves and every single one of us every single day Lord battles with a divided heart Lord would you make us into men and women boys and girls who want to love you with all our hearts with all our soul with all our mind and with all our strength na mahalin namin kayo, Panginoon, with the entirety of our beings. Mahalin namin kayo, Panginoon, supremely, actively, and exclusively. 
Mahalin namin kayo, Panginoon, with everything we have and everything we are. Oh Lord, enable us to do, to do that by your power. And once again, Lord, your word searches out our hearts. At dalangin namin, Lord, that you would have your way with us. And even now, Lord, by your spirit, to anyone in our midst who may be very near to the kingdom, but still outside of it, Lord, draw them by irresistible grace right into the very heart of the kingdom. For Jesus' sake, Amen. Sa ating pong paglapit at pakikibahagi ho sa banal na hapag ng ating Panginoong Diyos, nais nice ko pong uh, muli tignan ho natin sa alang-alang ang uh, sinabi ng Apostol Pablo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body and eats and drinks judgment on himself, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Mga kapatid, ito ay hapag ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Hindi ho natin ito hapag. Hindi ho natin ito dulang. Ito ay banal na dulang ng ating Panginoong Diyos. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament. It is an ordinance. This is a ceremony. That is to say, it is a sign and seal of the covenant of grace. It is a time of remembrance. Pag aala-ala that Jesus took on the, a human body, a body that was given for us, for you and me. The Lord's Supper is for believers. It is for those who trust in Jesus to, to, to save them from their sins. Narinig ko natin na mensahe kanina. Maring you are near to the kingdom. Maring nandiyan ka na. But only believers should participate in Lord's Supper because wrongly participating in the Lord's Supper carries the threat of judgment. And so don't take the Lord's Supper lightly. Wag ko nating basta-bastahin lang ito. It is one of the most precious gifts Christ has given in the church. And so, kapatid, if you are not a believer, not a true follower of Jesus, masaya kami, nalulugod kami na narinito kakasama namin. But we ask you to refrain from taking. But we do ask you to think about anong nangyayari sa paligid mo. To think and wait, to pray, to, to repent and to trust in Jesus Christ. Come to Him and believe in Him and trust Him for life salvation, and for eternity. And please ask us afterwards. That's one of the great things about this Lord's Supper for unbelievers as they come. Tanungin mo, narin mo kaming tanungin pagkatapos, bakit nyo ginagawa yan? O ano ang ginagawa ninyo? And so if you are an unbeliever and you are here, ask us a question, please. Let us pray as we come to the table. Panginoon, kami po ay naninikluhod, papakumbabang lumalapit sa inyong presensya. We humble ourselves by your grace, Panginoon. Kinikilala namin that we are poor, needy, and wretched sinners who deserve not mercy, kundi Lord, yung poot niyo at yung inyong judgment. Lord, napakadali para sa inyo na kami inyong puksain to banish us into outer darkness na kung saan na yan yung wailing and gnashing of teeth. But, Panginoon, dahil po sa inyong mabiyayang at ma, ma, punong-punong na, na biyaya sa amin, Lord, you have favored us. You, you, you've forgiven our sins. You, you, tinawag niyo, Panginoon, kami sa, sa aming pong, sa kadiliman, Panginoon, upang kayo po, Panginoon, ay amin pong mapaglingkuran. Kayo po, Panginoon, ay amin pong mahalin na, na sama-sama, Panginoon. Panginoon, ang dalangin po namin, Lord, dalhin niyo po kami into union and communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Kami, Lord, ay inadapt niyo sa inyong pamilya. You've indwelt us by your Spirit. And you've given to us yung buhay na pag-asa, the hope of glory. Indeed, we are moved to wonder, Panginoon. Love and praise by this display ng inyong pag-ibig sa amin, Panginoon, in Christ.
Maraming pong salamat, Panginoong Jesus, for all that you have done for us. 